Retro Tech 100. Well, hello there, and welcome to Retro Tech 100. This is part two of changing this quiz machine into an arcade machine. Um, I have done some little bits of work and have purchased some parts. I'm going to demonstrate what I've done and show you what I'm going to do and the bits I've put for it. So, firstly, I've taken out the marquee. Now, um, I wanted to take out the marquee and see if I could peel the back off of it. Here it is here, but I can't. It's really on there. I might scrub it, but it doesn't really matter. I could use this as a template to uh, make a new one so I can get some plexi and get it cut or get somebody to cut it for me who's got a bit more skill. I think that would be the best way. So that was quite easy to get out. Now if I just demonstrate what I've been doing inside. I've been picking away it. Now the issue I've had is um, there was a locking bar here. I had to remove that so I'm able to get to these switches. I really need to cut this out. I've bought a hacksaw to get this off because it is really getting in the way. It's one of the locking nuts from the other side and it, it moved the bar across backwards and forwards to unlock it and lock it. I couldn't keep it. It was really getting in the way. Uh, I'm going to have to do a bit more of an investigation there. Take more of that out. So that's what I'll be doing. It has two VGA ports. I think maybe one's 15 kilohertz and one's 31 kilohertz. I've not checked the other one yet. I pulled a lot of the wiring out. I pulled out the wiring for the um, incandescent bulb up here. I'd rather just do LED and run my own wires and know that um, what I've put in is safe. It looks like that the um, monitor was bypassed at some point. Um, there was there's some daisy chain cables that I'm going to sort out. Here's the two uh, VJ style cables. They are VJ. That one's definitely VJ. This one, I think 15 kilohertz. But I can't test it really, so I won't worry about it. Um, so, there was a plug coming out the front. So, uh, here's the plug. Then it went to this connector, which is all well and good. Then it went to a wire splitter. And this wire splitter was going to a power supply that was in there. I'll show you, I'll show you in a minute. And it was also going up to the top where the um, the light was. But I've taken it all out because it's really not necessary. Really not necessary, so I've pulled everything out basically. Um, and I'm gonna rewire it so it's safer. And I'm also gonna put uh, a few connectors on. So here's the power supply that was in it. It seems to be in decent condition. I disconnected all the cables and took it out. I'm gonna keep it, it's a mean well. A mean well. Um, SP124, so I think it converts 24 volts, or 240 volts into 24 volts, and some other stuff I don't really understand. There's a 24 volt power supply. So that's, uh, I'm going to hang on to it, it's quite useful. Now I'm going to have to make holes to make a control panel. And I didn't have a drill, but it's my birthday, and my brother bought me a little 18 volt drill. It's actually quite powerful. Got an Amazon for me, so that's going to come in use. That has literally nothing to do with anything. And then my mate Neil bought me some arcade buttons. Um, I was really surprised, actually, with this stick. It's a um, short throw, and it's also leaf switches inside. So you can see it's got leaf switches inside there. So I think that's going to be decent. Came with this little encoder. Um... I'm probably going to make a couple of control panels to mess about. These are the buttons. So I've got the uh, I've got these colours here: red and black. Got some little buttons as well. There's the red. So it comes with these buttons, and it comes with a wire and loom. I've made, I've put these together before. They're no biggie. These connectors just go onto the uh, onto there, and then you hook them to the buttons. Um, for RetroPie, it's pretty straightforward because you can pick whatever buttons in whatever order when you start. With MAME and stuff, you kind of have to know which is which, but I'll get there eventually in the end. So it was very nice of Neil and my brother to buy me those bits and pieces. I bought a few little tools because I was um, I just don't have many tools. Or some uh, metal drill bits. I don't know whether I'm going to make the control panel out of metal or I might make it out of laminate, which was a good idea of Neil's. I've got this to deal with some of the power issues, but I don't think I'll be using that. Um, with that Y splitter that goes from the monitor 
and splits off to a white, I'm going to put this on so then I can plug in a power strip inside. It's nice and tidy, you know. And some electrical cable. And to deal with the control panel, I think I'm going to be hacking about. So I've got myself a little hacksaw. So I think first, let's do the uh, wiring, that's straightforward. And uh, get the wiring sorted so I can plug some stuff in. So there's two wires coming off this mains power cable. So we've got one. This is the cable going in. Then we've got one splitter. And then where that connector is, I'm going to change it for a chocolate block. I just feel more comfortable. And then there's another wire. And there's another cable. So we've got two. So I'm going to... Um, Tap off one using some of these. I'm going to use some of these on that connector there. And then I'm going to see if I can run the wire down the back, get it out, and put on the uh, adapter block so I can plug uh, a strip in. So I've managed to punch myself a new cable hole. It was very difficult. Uh, I tried the cordless, it wasn't even touching it. So I've got a cord drill out. I had. Uh, Lying about, I don't, I don't really trust it. And I've got a lot of earring in, but we've got a hole. I will have to take the plug off and uh, re-plug it because there's no way I'm going to attempt to try and continue drilling through that because I'll tell you something for nothing. When whoever built this built it right, it's like a tank. So I'm going to wipe it down a little bit, um, cut the plug off, pull the cable through and do a bit of wiring like I was on about. So that's the electrical done really. Um, if I show you, that's the VJ cable coming out. That's the old, that's the, what I think is a 15 kilohertz. I'll just put it out of the way. So we've got the cable going out the back and then I've rewired it to this chocolate block. Um, and then that goes up to the monitor. Then it splits in that Y and I put on this. So now I can plug uh, other stuff into it. Be able to tuck it down there, whatever I want to do. But it's much tidier now, it makes a lot more sense. I'm at a bit of a standstill now. I can't turn these, I'm going to need a little bit of a socket set because when you turn these, these come out. So then this whole section here will be, be able to be removed. I can take these bits off, be able to get up here. Uh, but I'm stuck, I'm gonna have to order a little. Socket set on um, on eBay. I don't really know what size those little nuts are. I've tried using like a, you know, the back of a a posse bit. Oh, I can't really explain what I'm on about, but I can't get the buggers off. eBay to the rescue with this tool. This little mini socket set lets me get the uh, the nuts out of here. So there's like it's supposed to be six, but there's only five. Get these out. I should be able to uh, work on this panel, finally. So I just found that this came loose now, taking those bolts out. Finally, it got to this bit. I will put it back in for strength. And you can see there. But that was a real pain in the arse. Because of these brackets here, um, the locking mechanism was on it, and I was cutting away it. All I had to do was take those bolts out, but in order to do that, I needed a tool. And in order to get a tool, I had to wait for eBay, but it's out now. So, I should be able to uh, get to the switches, get them buggers out. And then work out uh, how to get this panel out here. That might be a case of having to get something newer. Uh, I don't know how it's going to come out if it's like stuck in or it's hard to say from here. Uh, I'll get all these um, buttons out and switches and I'll get back to you. So this is where we stand so far. Um, after much cajoling, I got the whole lot of the panel out. Uh, this was underneath the first bit I got out. This these two sections, and here's the top panel and the bit that was underneath and all the switches. It was a ball ache and I had to use a lot of. Uh, a lot of uh, persuading to get it off, but that's what it looks like. That's plastic there, so that'd be quite easy to drill if I want to. And then this is the overlay that was on top. So I think I might reuse this. And the whole space isn't isn't the best, but what I thought I'd do was maybe have a um, joystick. Four switches, joystick four switches, I haven't decided yet. 
what I'd really like to do is be able to get um, a panel like this made four times and so I could uh, have different layouts but I haven't worked out the layout yet I have to give this a clean now this base bit is empty it all needs a clean so I have to clean it all there's parts of build where you use a lot of metal obviously for strength so now it is completely empty in there still not a great space to work with but uh, a lot better than it was none of this comes off this is all one plastic body and so it's been and uh, it's all plastic here so it's not like you can unbolt the base of it even though there's a seam looks like it's been glued but we'll work with what we've got i'm really happy we got this far I didn't expect to go that far today. That tool turned up and then it was all systems go. As you can see, things have escalated quickly. There's quite a lot I didn't film because I got so overexcited about getting this thing running. Uh, I've made a few jumps. First thing I'm gonna point out, yes, uh, my button layout is strange. I um, wanted to get this running. So what I did is I widened out the button holes that were already there underneath the plastic, underneath the control panel, should I say, into the plastic and uh, put in my buttons and put in my joystick now it looks ugly it certainly is ugly but i'm going to get my mate cam to do the control panel he's going to make it out of acrylic it will cover all these old holes when i get the uh, new button layout sorted i'm going to go with the one player button layout because uh, i feel like i'll be playing it myself most of the time anyway so i might as well have the space to myself i could always change it uh down the line anyway Let's get on to things. Uh, I made a few cock-ups when it came to the holes. The reason why the holes are like this is because at first I wanted to go with this joystick. Now this was a pain in the ass because of a few reasons. One, the clip here. Getting that clip on underneath there, it doesn't just wrap on the top there, the control panel, it goes underneath so you've got a limited space. And you have to, uh, to get this clip into there, you have to push in three directions and push it in. It is a total nightmare. Anyway, I did get it mounted, and it did look tidier than I've got it there now. The problem was is, it wasn't working right. When I went to configure the controls on um, RetroPie, which I'm using, I'm not going to use a PC now. Um, I was getting issues with uh, the control scheme. Well, I figured out in the end was... It was grounding out on a bolt that's too long. The bolts I got here, I got yesterday, and they're too long. They're not the right kind of bolts. They're not flat on the top. They're not coach bolts. That's what I could get. It was like one pound twenty for four. I just wanted to get it running. Anyway, I changed the, uh, I changed the con the control stick, and I found I was still getting the same problem. So I had a little look. It's very dark in there. It lifts up. It's a bit awkward to get to, and I realised that one of the pins on one of the connectors was touching the bolt and grounding out so that was the reason i oh, did me head in i was on it for hours last night but i've got it sorted in the end so i'm going with a like a i'm going to go with a neo geo style layout so i'll have four buttons like this but obviously in the neo geo style you know the curved and i'm going to get a i'll probably have it some sort of pattern underneath the acrylic i don't know really what i'm going to do with the acrylic um cam's really good at this stuff i just generally leave it to him to work out designs because he's bang on with designs he, he made my retro pie arcade stick and you might have seen it years ago he built it for me been using that thing ever since anyway i uh moved completely to retro pie because i found this image it is the hursty's one up arcade 32 gig image it's arcade arcade only but what i liked was it's in a it's a 5.4 5-4 uh, aspect ratio I thought oh I'm going to have to build my own image because I'm having issues with the uh, I'm having issues with the resolution and I had issues with the um, gaps when I was playing games and stuff like that Over, they had overlays on the other images I was using but I fired up this image and it was bang on you've only got like a tiny little bit missing on the top and bottom I used the controls on the monitor to get it pretty much bang on and i'm really happy with the image it looks great it is i think it's a 17 inch crt monitor inside this it's a vga monitor so it was a vj to hdmi straight into retro pie i'll show you inside in a minute but there's not a lot to see i'm using a soundbar in a minute so it works really well 
What have I got left to do in it? Well, obviously I've got to do the marquee. I'm going to put LED, USB LED lights. I've got them there ready to go. This is probably going to take about six weeks because I'm going to have to get the control panel done. Um, I am keeping this control panel and sending Cam some new buttons and new sticks so I can continue to play while he's doing the, the control panel so there's no pressure on him to speed up or do it quickly because I was really wanting this running. But now I can play, even though it's a weird button layout, um, I still can play all the games I want to play. So that's great. It's working absolutely great on this RetroPie image. Um, if I just, I don't know what the best way to show you is. Let's show you underneath and then we'll show you some gameplay. So I wired up all the buttons on this iPad controller that comes with the buttons that I've got. My mate Neil got me all these buttons actually. And they work good, they're actually leaf buttons. So if you can, it's gonna be a bit awkward and a bit annoying for you. But there's the um, button controller, I forget what they call them now. Uh, whatever they call them and the buttons are in there they're just these little small style buttons with the two pins i find i'm gonna go with this kind of style but get beveled buttons um concave buttons but with this style pin because it doesn't give me a lot there if i wanted to use actual arcade switches it wouldn't give me enough room and i'd get really annoyed as you can see the bolts are really long on that and that's what caused me the issue but i bend the pin out of the way and it's working now in here i've just got my pie chucked in I've got the wiring that you saw before. I've got a four-way plug socket in there, all wired up to the back. So got rid of all them stupid wires like you showed you before. And the sound bar, I will be using the original speakers, which are up here. Getting a little 15 pound amp from eBay and I'm gonna wire them up. So that the part three will probably be the final part. Obviously I've got to do cosmetic stuff, put a piece of wood in there and just make it all tidy, tidy up all the wires and that, but it works great at the moment. So that's all. Oh, I've got a select button. It was a hole just there, so I thought I'd use it as the select button. So because when on RetroPie, when you hit start and select, it takes you back out to the menu. So if I close that back up, see, you push that button, it takes you to the video as well. So that's cool. You get the switch. You can have it running without playing it. Just have it in the background. It's kind of why I want an arcade machine to have that kind of look as if it was uh, just running in the arcade. I'm really happy with it so far. Very happy. So this image is brilliant and it works great. I'm trying to think of the best place to, to put you so you can see it running. Yeah, because my, my broad shoulders will block it out of the way because I'm, sort of, I'm such a beast, you see. So there we go. So this image is great. It's got um, Daphne arcade. Uh, let's go the other way. Daphne arcade classics, last played favorites, all games, X Men wrestling. It's a great image. It's all arcade, and that's what I wanted. Vector, Universal, Trackball, Toe Plan. There's leaf switches in this arcade stick, by the way. Instead of um, instead of just the switches, I really like that. I didn't expect that uh, to come with the. Um, to come with that stick, I thought it would be just normal switches. But I really do like the leaf switches. I'm going to, to show you what's on this image anyway. I'll put you there. Got shmups, shmups section. Seabull, I don't know what that is. Sega Classics, Samurai Showdown, Sammy, Raising, Rising, Even. Shmups. Puzzle. Psycho. Platform games. Pinball. It's a great image. It's all cut down into different... Um, makers and it's also down to uh, different play styles or Konami classics it's a brilliant image really good I'll leave a link in the description because if you're going to use a VGA monitor that's the same resolution I've got here 1024 by 768 it fits perfectly so if you want to use your Raspberry Pi on a VGA monitor get this image because it takes all the headache out of it really good image and it works great go with Dimitri. I don't know if I've got enough buttons for, um, for playing CBS2 games, probably not. 
I think I might have to go on a modified Neo Geo look and have six buttons. Yeah, I don't think I do. <laughs> you can see it looks great. I mean, you're just having an overlay retro bar on a CRT inside a cab. It's just brilliant. I just love it. I was up to half one last night playing. So what have I got left to do? Well, I've got to put in the, sa um, the sound on the proper speakers rather than using the sound bar. Just think it'd be nicer. Got to do up here. I think I might go with a few, buy a few um, overlays and then cut them to size, put them in. I've got to do some sort of uh, design. I think I'm, I don't know, see how I'm up in the air. I'll see what comes and what's available. And I've got to do the uh, control panel. And uh, I don't know how I'm going to fill those gaps. I'm not really thought about it yet. But I'm just enjoying it for now. I'll probably do an update video in about six weeks, two months time with it all finished. I'm really happy it all works so far. It looks great. And it makes uh, having an arcade in your home, every kid wanted one, didn't they? And now I've got one, thanks to Simon. Game of sight, gave me this cab. I'm really pleased he's did. So it's by no means finished, but I'll be finished in a couple of months time, and it's definitely playable now. Even with this weird button layout. This has been RetroTech 100. I'll see you next time.